This tape deals with the spinothalamic tract, a principal pain pathway in the human body. We need a way to perceive pain, and the human body has several different tracks. One of the key tracks that relays pain to consciousness is the spinothalamic tract. It's a tract that goes from the spinal cord to the thalamus. Now the entire pathway uh, consists of three axons. So let's look at this. Let's introduce pain here in the form of heat to the fingertip. All right, there are thermoreceptors in the fingertip that fire and relay pain through the dorsal root to the dorsal horn, specifically the nucleus proprius of the dorsal horn. In this drawing, you can see this little circle here represents the nucleus proprius, or the proper sensory nucleus. So those incoming fibers here travel in the lateral division of the dorsal root, L4, lightly myelinated. So those are lightly myelinated fibers that come in and synapse a nucleus proprius. Now nucleus proprius then sends out a axon, axon of its own. I mean, there's thousands of neurons here. So these axons come out, they travel in the gray matter of the spinal cord, leave the gray matter in the ventral part of the spinal cord here called the anterior commissure, cross the midline, and then pile up in what we call the spinothalamic tract proper. In this drawing, you can see the dorsal columns are here, the spinal cerebellar tracts, and right in this region here, in the lateral and ventral funicula, you can see where the spinothalamic tract is. Remember, these originated over here. All right, so a thermal insult. Receptors fire, come in through the lateral division of the dorsal root, synapse on nucleus proprius, cross the midline, pile up in this region here in the white matter, to form the spinal thalamic tract proper. And you can see where it sits in relationship to the medial lumniscus in the pons, up in the midbrain here, between the colliculi and the medial lumniscus. And finally, it's going to go to the VPL of the thalamus, the ventral posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus. What goes to VPM? The trigeminal complex goes to VPM. And then the last fiber goes from the VPL up to 312. And pain is perceived in the post-central gyrus, or the somatosensory cortex, area 312. Now what can go wrong with the spinal thalamic tract? Well, there's a, uh, a condition called syringomyelia, where you get a cavitation of the spinal cord. It can be brought on by injury, some sort of disease, or it can be idiopathic. And you can see here we're starting to get this syrinx or tube right here. Uh, syrinx is Latin for tube or hollow reed. Uh, the word syringe comes from syrinx. There's some uh, actually uh, mythologically there was a nymph named syrinx who was being pursued by the god Pan and she ran into the river and was turned in to a hollow reed. And then when the wind would blow, music would come out of that reed. So Pan took her, cut her up, and made her into his pipes. Pretty wild. So that's a syrinx. And here you can see with this little animation, there's a syrinx forming. So this would be syringomyelia. And you can see as it grows, it begins to impinge on this area of the spinal thalamic tract and it's going to wipe out cervical portions first. There really is no head in this little man, this little homunculus, because that's handled by the trigeminal nerve. But you can see there's what they call sacral sparing, usually with a syrinx, where the sacral most spinal thalamic fibers are lateral. And you can see the spinal thalamic pathway comes in 
and then crosses the midline and piles up here. It does the same thing on the other side. So you'll get a bilateral effect with the syrinx. And if it's in thoracic regions, you'll get a vest-like uh, lack of feeling right here. And that's a classic syrinx in this area right here. Another uh, thing that can happen is a brown succord lesion, which is basically functionally a hemisection of the spinal cord. This could be done by tumor, stroke, some kind of uh, car accident, twisting of the spinal column, and you effectively cut half of the spinal cord. So some questions you should be thinking about, you know, what spinal cord level is this? What pathways are transected? What are the symptoms? And what you should note here, that proprioception is lost on the side of the lesion. That's because dorsal column fiber is going to come in and they're going to travel ipsilaterally up the posterior column to cross in the medulla. So if the lesion is here, you're going to affect proprioception on the same side. But pain and temperature are lost on the opposite side because the spinal thalamic pathway comes in this way synapses and nucleus proprius, second order fibers cross the midline and then travel up the spinal thalamic tract in this region. So you're going to lose pain and temperature on the opposite side. And these simplistic drawings kind of emphasize that right here. Here's posterior column fibers coming in on the medial division of the dorsal root. They travel up fasciculus cuneatus or gracilis in the posterior columns and then they're going to synapse on the same nuclei and cross the midline. So a cut down here is going to affect proprioception, vibration, and two-point discrimination on the same side. But you contrast that with the spinal thalamic tract. Make a cut in the spinal cord here, you're going to affect pain and temperature sensation on the opposite side of the body. And with the cortical spinal tract, if you make a cut down here, you're going to affect movement on the same side of the body because the decussation or crossing is rostral to the, where the injury would be. Now how about, let's finish with a boards-like question. A 66-year-old anatomy professor with a beard wakes up one morning and finds he cannot feel the lower left side of his body and the right side of his face. He calls to his wife, but she cannot understand what he is saying. So he has kind of a hoarse, weak voice. What may be the cause? What you can do here is pause the tape and then think about this and look at the answers. Is this a stroke? Middle cerebral artery stroke? Is this Lou Gehrig's disease? Is this a diabetic neuropathy, a loss of feeling due to diabetes? Is this a stroke in the medulla on the right side? Or is this a syrinx forming in a thoracic cord, syringomyelia? The correct answer is right medullary stroke or Wallenberg syndrome. Uh, an MCA stroke would show motor signs, so we didn't mention any motor signs. ALS would affect the motor function bilaterally because it's going to affect cortical spinal tract and anterior horn cells. Diabetes would affect sensory systems, typically bilaterally, and you would have many other signs. You could have cardiac problems, of course you'd have blood sugar problems, problems with skin healing, etc. D is correct, the medullary stroke or Wallenberg syndrome. And E, a syrinx at thoracic levels would result in a bilateral vest-like loss of sensation due to uh, the bilateral disruption of the spinal thalamic tract. And just a couple more notes here on details with a Wallenberg syndrome. A stroke of the lateral medulla are caused when blood flow is interrupted in the vertebral artery or pica, the posterior cerebral artery. And of course, this will cause death of the affected neurons. And you can read this, but some of these hallmarks with the Wallenberg uh, syndrome is you get this crossed sensory effect. You lose pain and temperature on the opposite side of the body because you're disrupting the spinal thalamic tract after it's crossed. It's an ascending pathway. But the tr you interrupt the trigeminal uh, tract when it's yet uncrossed. So you're going to affect 
the same side of the body as the lesion. So that's kind of a cross thing. It's going to be opposite. Pain and temperature lost from the opposite side of the body, but same side of the face as the stroke. What else can be affected? Well, there's a Horner syndrome because there are um, the upper uh, sympathetic fibers are traveling very close to the spinal thalamic tract, so, so you're going to get meiosis, ptosis, and anhydrosis, like classic Horners. You're going to get ataxia because you're going to goof up the spinal cerebellar connections. You're going to get vertigo and dizziness and some eye problems, etc., because you're going to goof up the vestibular nuclei, which are there by the inferior cerebellar peduncle. And you can destroy the nucleus ambiguous, which is going to result in problems talking and swallowing. And there you have it, the spinal thalamic tract.